hallmarks are the. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> while. While. Cleaning an organization is the hallmark of the weekend, or, or our hallmark, all our hallmarks of the weekend. Uh, this weekend, uh, uh, needless to say, we'll be doing more more cleaning and organizing. Organizing. Uh, we've been doing that all week long, in addition to all the other work that we've been doing. Uh, and then just sort of cleaning up after the uh, uh, upgrades. There's a lot of packaging materials around still that need to be recycled and sort of taken care of. And uh, then it's a general cleaning in the in organization in the uh, kitchen diner. The editing base still has to be organized. That's what's on schedule for the weekend. Then I also have to fix up the studio, the area where I uh, filmed uh, Beauty and the Geek. Uh, the BTS vlogs area here, not, a, not, not much of a problem. The electronics bench still has to be worked on. And of course, as I said before, the editing bay. Uh, has to be worked on as you know has to be worked on well and that's in the other room there uh, so we'll see what happens over the weekend we'll see what we end up getting done uh, so I still have to work on the insta vlogs I've got scheduled that to do that work later on today I have uh, beauty and the geek scheduled to work on today and I have to uh, get out the next episode, the next episode of Ubuntu BSD Unix Hotel. So that all, all these things have to be worked on and, and, and over the weekend, and sort of worked into the production schedule so that uh, we can sort of get back on schedule things, with, with things. So that's about it for now. I'm gonna leave this short here because uh, we are gonna be vlogging for the entire for just about three or four days. So it's gonna cover. This vlog is going to cover from November 1st to November 4th. Uh, that's, a, that's a Monday. And, uh, yeah, uh, now that we've got a new travel camera, you can, I can take you around and uh, take you around more. Hmm. Anyways, I will see you in a couple hours. And you know what's going on. All right, bye. I was supposed to do, I was supposed to do this vlog... At 8 p.m. It's now midnight, so there's a four-hour difference between when I was supposed to do this and and now. Oh, uh, today's been pretty much a day of cleaning and organizing. That's sort of what I've got done today. Uh, you can kind of sort of see what's going on on the channel if you watch my the videos that I watch and some of the other things that I did around the internet. Uh, are tra are trackable if you came if you came by my channel and sort of looked at my feed, you sort of be able to see what I've sort of been up to. Uh, basically, uh, what happens is that when you've got a lot of stuff, you have to start sort uh, every once in a while you have to reorganize things to get things working better, and that's kind of what I'm in the process of doing: uh, reorganizing the editing desk, uh, reorganizing and working on the uh, kitchen diner. That's the little diner that I've built. Uh, this way behind me to, to the left. Uh, the editing desk is behind me, but not there. That's the uh, kitchen diner over there. Right behind me there. That's the uh, editing. That's the editing desk. That's where I do all my editing for videos. Uh, that still requires an enormous amount of editing to do, an enormous amount of reorganizing to do. There's stuff all over the place. It's still work workable. It's still usable, but just there's just stuff all over the place, so it has to be uh, cleaned up and organized. So uh, that's what's going to happen again in a couple hours. I'm going to get up uh, and <laughs> basically uh, just get to uh, uh, the cleaning and organizing again. That's kind of how things go. Is 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 not always uh, tons of excitement. So. Anyways, I will uh, see you in a couple hours for the next segment. It's about 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> and uh, it's, I'm going to start the, uh, the Saturday day. Which is, you know, like the whole weekend is going to be primarily just cleaning. There we go. Got the countdowns timer started. Although I don't think this segment's gonna take that long. 
Uh, the first thing is that uh, I've got to record my dream journal. And that's part, partly is that uh, my dream journal is uh, looking at uh, the uh, and examining the contents of my dream because I do I do uh, have the ability to do, to lucid dream. That's most of my dreams are are particularly lucid. So I remember the contents of them. I remember sort of what goes on in them. I, even though they are rather bizarre, uh, I do have this uh, understanding, this sort of this awareness of what was going on in them, even after I've woken up. Uh, and this has sort of led me to uh, today's sort of conclusion about this thing, and this conclusion that uh, that I've previously previously have observed. And sort of can apply it to the, to uh, <laughs> here goes this again. Uh, that's my, my uh, cyborg elf from you is, is always chirps on and on and on. It's a uh, Hatsune Miku, uh, a live wallpaper. But anyways, back to the uh, dream. Dreams from from what I've observed. Uh, well, although. Each individual dream, and one one dream is not necessarily one dream by itself, but rather several connected together. Uh, and although the two are, uh, well, it could be more than two. And they, although they, because there's more than two, may occur in a variety of different places and have a variety of different content in it, the principal theme and the underlying emotion behind the dream and dreams, I should say, these segments of the dream, uh, are all the same. So, it, from, from what I can observe, is that the, the dream itself focuses on the emotion rather than focusing on the specific individual contents of it. So, contents can be weird, and so if you go try to, uh, uh, to sort of analyze the content of a particular dream, you may end up getting it wrong because, well, it's not focused on the content itself. It's focused on the, uh, uh, it's not focused, it, it's, it, uh, it's not focused on the content itself. It's focused on the, uh, the underlying theme, the underlying emotion of the dream. So it's the emotion that drives the dream. And what happens is that it will bring that emotion into a variety of different scenarios, if you will and play that emotion out in that scenario. And you react, in other words, the emotion is given to you. It's brought out. That's the emotional context of the scenario is brought out. And then you react and respond to it uh, in a variety of different ways, however you uh, feel you're able to handle. In other words, uh, is it something that's more, uh, you know, is it anger? Is it hate? Is it... Uh, something you love, something you, you know you enjoy to eat. Uh, in other words, there's a variety of different themes there. There's uh, emotional themes that sort of pull at you, uh, and the how you handle it in many ways determines how it ends up ending. And, but not only ends up ending, it in many cases it doesn't end. It what happens is it, it you you go into one situation, you handle it okay, but as soon as you handle it okay. <laughs> And there's no particular reaction to it in terms of freaking out or anger. It automatically switches to the next scenario without particularly ending. So one one theme can have one dream can have multiple different scenarios immediately ending when the I, know, I guess expected result, the expected emotional result doesn't occur. Doesn't occur. In other words. If you have some degree of resolution within the dream or, or that scenario, it quickly switches, it, or not quickly, it immediately switches over to the next scenario and tests your emotions out within that scenario and say, okay, well, well how about this? And if you go through that, okay, and then you go through the next, it automatically switches over again uh, to the next scenario. And so you can have uh, anywhere from two to seven, add up to seven different scenarios that occur all in a row. Uh, when I'm dreaming, and this last one that I had now, this was sort of thinking about was uh, three or four different scenarios all sort of bunched together, and these are the theme of the dream is, is sort of a recurring one, 
uh, that is there, and there's two particular things. It's primarily loneliness where I feel like being left behind and no one sort of either. It's sort of the awareness of my geekiness where I spend a large chunk of myself, large chunk of my time by myself at my research desk, and I don't have a lot of social. Con I don't have places to go out. I don't have friends to go out with necessarily. And this is sort of the underlying theme. And what happens is that in these dreams, uh, the contents of the dream, and the sort of the specifics of the dream, are it's how I react to when things are taken away from me. And so what happens is before I used to get really upset about that, and that used to be part of my nightmares were uh, were things being taken away from me that I really wanted. You know, it was sort of uh, I view some of the things that I that I want as some of the things I need uh, because it's my sense of reality. And when these things are gone, my sense of reality, my sense of place is gone and displaced and it uh, it, it, it uh, unnerves me. This doesn't necessarily upset me, but it unnerves me. It makes me uneasy. And this is where the emotional challenge comes in. But over the last few years, as I've been sort of coming to terms with a lot of different things, uh, and I was aware that in the dream you are lucid dreaming, dreaming, so that I can actually adjust my emotions in the dream and sort of sit down and think about it afterwards, and have a conscious, uh, uh, a conscious awareness of going into the next dream, even if this is the same dream. Uh, the reaction is not not the same as it was uh, when I first started having these dreams, and I seem to have sort of uh, come to a resolution uh, of. Uh, my geekiness, my my individuality that I didn't have before, and so, but it's, it's not that it's not challenging. Still, there still are challenges to it, but you have to realize that in each scenario that you are in a new scenario, and then you have to adjust according to whatever is given to you. Uh, but that being said, uh, it's now time to uh, start the Saturday, and that means cleaning and organization all day today. We'll see what I can get done, and let's see what we can get functional. All right, I'll see you in the next segment in a couple hours. Being sleep deprived uh, <laughs> is not uh, an unusual unusual thing for me. You can see in the videos, but I was just at my friend, um, well, my internet friend Morgan Page loves uh, Page, and she has this song in the background playing. <laughs> it's so ironic. So I think I'd kind of come back here in my sort of bizarreness. I'm feeling really tired right now. I'm just kind of knocked out, and so I decided to play this song in the background while I'm talking, which is the same background she has in her video. Uh, uh, the, which which one is it now? Yeah. Last week Friday. That's the one it was. Uh, I'll put it in the link below. All right. Learned taking my sleep and <laughs> is that a lot of times when you do a lot of heavy exercising or a lot of heavy work, when your body recovers from it or from any injury, there is a period of time where your body has to go to sleep because that's when you when you when your body repairs itself when your body grows, it's in your sleep. And so what happens is that. One of the things that occurs when you're sleep deprived is there is not the level of growth or body repair uh, that is required for the body. So, in other words, the longer you uh, uh, remain in a sleep deprived condition without sort of taking that sleep holiday and catching up on your sleep, uh, then what ends up happening, the damage continues on and on and on and on. In other words, it builds. It doesn't simply just uh, just stop at one point and that's it. It just continues on further and further, creating more and more damage. Uh, and this is where a lot of fatigue comes in, comes in, because the signal isn't gonna be pain that your body feels from the lack of repair. It's the signal that the body needs to be repaired comes from fatigue that you can't open your eyes. You know. Uh, you feel really exhausted. In other words, you feel fatigued. This is an indication that your body needs more sleep. And it's often, uh, I would recommend that you just sort of, you know, take a day off or whatever hours you can off 
I mean, as I said, if you, let's say you can't take a day off and sleep, uh, then what you do is you add a couple more hours to your sleep uh, and do it that way and try to be more efficient during the day with whatever you'll have to do during the day. And this is sort of the, the, the thing here. But the thing is, is that even when you're sleeping and your body's in that repair mode, it is using up an enormous amount of food. So at some point in time in the night, you're going to have to get up and eat just to refuel, put enough fuel in the body. Uh, not enough fuel, but enough materials. Uh, your food is the organic chemicals, uh, or I should say are the organic chemicals that the body uses uh, to repair itself. So if your body is deprived of, the, of those organic nutrients, of the, of the organic chemicals, uh, then at some point in time when it, when it is doing the repair, saying, oh, we're out of material, so shut, st shut down, stop. So uh, that's how that works. Uh, sort of. <laughs> it is more complicated than that, but that's one of the things I figured out. And of course, I got up, I ate, uh, work, uh, did some uh, work in the kitchen diner. Uh, whenever I cook, I always clean and fix up as well. That way, uh, it's not you don't have to do all the cleaning at once. You don't have to do all the chores at once. And of course, I did some of the uh, YouTube stroll. I went by uh, Cater uh, Caters and Seven uh, uh, Cater Cater Caters One Seven. That's right. That's that's their channel there. Uh, I went by Graveyard Girls. I went by a couple of the, a couple pages. I went by the Fine Girls. And uh, uh, was the Starberry Seventeen? This Lifeberry. I went by her page and saw Cat there, and the other guy. I can't remember his name. I know the girl. I know the other girl, Cat, from her gaming tub. I don't know the other guy there. Oh, that was basically it. Now I'm uh, ready to go back to bed again. So this is my in, in between sleep uh, uh, snack. Sort of, if you want to call it a midnight snack. Anyways, I'll see you in a bit. It's Monday morning. Yeah, that's right. Monday morning on November. I always get the date here. November 4th. Yeah, it's the ending segment of the blog. It's 9. We're just about quarter past 9. So that's uh, where we are right now. The, the way the day works here is that. Uh, I never actually finish the day uh, when I go to crash. In the crash period, uh, and that usually happens on, I realize that the crash period usually, usually happens on a daily basis. It's either more severe or less severe, depending on, on, on what act, what's actually happening and how much work I've gotten done during the week. If there's been a lot of heavy hiking, to go food shopping and shopping in general, like there was last week, then the crash actually... Uh, Particularly near the end of the week is more severe than it is usually, and uh, so I end up uh, asleep and uh, writing in my sleep journal uh, uh, more often than not. In other words, it's a, it's a longer period of time than uh, than it normally would be, but that's to be expected because that's what, that's that's when your body's growing. That's when the body's repairing itself. Uh, so you have to have. You know, basically, when you're in, in, in this sort of physical mode, you're doing a lot of heavy lifting in terms of uh, 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 the food shopping. Because when I go food shopping, this is what you need to understand, or, or should understand, is that the, the, the backpack that I carry, while, while it's empty going back, it's more often not full coming... Uh, <clears throat> well, it's more often not empty going there, coming back, it's full. And this causes a problem because it, it, it's it, it, it could when it's full it could be anywhere between 70 and 80 pounds on your back and that puts a huge weight on your body that your body has to get used to. Now that I've been doing this for a couple of years now, so I'm I am used to this, and I am aware that after that period, after I come back like that, the body does have to uh, have to rest. And it's basically it's you exercise, you eat, and then you sleep. You never exercise, you never eat before you exercise. Always eat after you exercise. Excuse me. There's a hair here. <laughs> uh, and that way what happens is that you, you, when you eat, after you exercise, your body is, is, needs is food. It needs the, uh, the, uh, the chemicals, the organic chemicals, 
uh, the body needs to repair itself, to uh, deal with the energy, and so on and so forth. And one of the best ways, uh, to, not one of the best ways, when the body is in that sort of starvation mode, it's in its highest uptake. It's ramped up its ability to absorb nutrients to its highest level. So, that's, so exercising before you eat is always a good idea in terms of absorbing the amount of uh, organic chemicals from the food or nutrients uh, that the body needs. That's the best way of doing that. So uh, that's a lot of times what I do. And the thing is, is that after the walks, when your exercise is extreme, that's when you uh, end up having, you know, it, it, you, you end up eating enough food to sort of, you know, give yourself enough to eat, enough to satisfy your body in terms of what it needs right then and there. Because at all times, you, you, your appetite is, after exercising, it, it is there, but it's not there what it, what it normally would be because uh, your, your muscles aren't relaxed. In order for your stomach to have a lot of food in, in it, the muscles need to relax. The muscle uh, around the stomach, because the stomach is a muscle, has to be relaxed in order to expand. If your muscles are tight from exercising, then although you're hungry, you're not going to be able to fit as much food in your stomach. So uh, you, you're you able to control your appetite in terms of what you eat a lot better than if it were when, if your stomach was you know more relaxed and, you know, <laughs> not after exercise. And so then after that, you wait about a half hour, 45 minutes, then you go to sleep. So it allow your body to sort of to, to relax after that. And the sleep could be anywhere from uh, two to eight hours. And after that, so that's crash, that sleep, uh, you get up and uh, you start your next chunk of the day or whatever it is until you uh, need to crash again. And the thing is, the harder the exercise is, the longer the recovery period. And with the food shopping, it tends to take between uh, uh, between two and four days. The furthest out I've, I've had the uh, I've had the uh, crash from the exercise from food shopping is four days. Uh, but it's uh, uh, the shortest I've had it is two. I've also had it just for two days, and then it was nothing. Uh, so, anyways, uh, a lot of work was done on the weekend. If you check to see uh, the, uh, the the channel. You'll see I've done some upgrades on the channel itself. If you go to the channel uh, page on YouTube, uh, we're starting to bring up more of the web series look. And we're, and YouTube, uh, our YouTube channel, the uh, Cyborg Alpha TV, is starting to look more like a TV channel now. So this is sort of where we're going now. We're getting more into the TV mode, more onto the video on demand mode. And we are going to sort of continue moving in that direction uh, until we have a full lineup of shows. Once the full lineup of shows are more or less done in, in ske ske properly scheduled into our production schedule, in other words, they're actually working in the schedule and being done, then we will move on to bringing out season one, which will begin the work on uh, physics TV. So, in other words, things are coming together. There are everything is coming together, and you can watch this progress behind the scenes here on Cyber Cyborg Alpha TV. Cyborg Alpha TV. Cyborg Alpha TV is always going to be the behind the scenes. It's always going to be uh, what you see while things are being created. Uh, Physics TV is going to be the documentaries, the more polished stuff. It's going to be uh, a lot more like a regular TV show where a lot of the uh, we'll call it less exciting stuff uh, the background stuff, the uh, behind-the-scenes stuff, is sort of edited out, and all you see is the polished and finished material. So, if you want to see, if you like seeing the polished, 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 polished and, and finished material, that's that's going to be Physics TV. If you want to see the behind-the-scenes, you want to see what's actually going on. What does it take to get from from concept to reality? This is what Cyborg Alpha TV is. Cyborg Alpha TV is the unedited. Uh, 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 library notes, the lab notes of myself, uh, Dr. Daniel Karras. I am Cyborg Alpha, or should I say, we are Cyborg Alpha because we, uh, Cyborg Alpha will be a, a, a independent entity, and that's what Cyborg Alpha TV is. That's what it's all about. Anyways, that's it for today. Time is up. I will see you in a couple hours when we start BTRL, uh, BTS Logs all over again. Bye.